Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the starting 11 show, Everton versus Fulham. Half five kickoff, Goodison Park on Saturday. Let's get into it. Jordan Pickford in goal. Couple of clean sheets in a row. That's it. Uh, back four. And this is where it gets interesting, isn't it? For a lot of people, lots of debate this week about who should play, who should remain, who should be dropped. Uh, I'm, I'm going to keep Ashley Young at right back. And I know a lot of people will be like, ah, oh, but he's not the right back. And we had, we had three right backs on the bench last week and all that. For me, as it stands, I think there is an argument over leaving people in um, who deserve to play and maybe someone who's better than them. I have got no evidence that Seamus Coleman right now with his injury record or Nathan Patterson with his entire record that Evan is better than Ashley Young. I think Ashley Young's doing well in the role he's been asked to do. And I think two clean sheets sort of proves that. I've I've always sort of liked Ashley Young. I think he does a really good job. Nathan Patterson sort of has to prove that he's better than him and hasn't done. Seamus Coleman is a better right back than Ashley Young, of course, but the injury record in the last few months for me is just means that Ashley Young starts this. You know what you're going to get, and you do have the option of bringing on one of those players, certainly in a home game. Um, if you want to be more attacking, if you need to be more attacking, both of those players can come on and do a job for you. But I'm going to start Ashley Young. I think that having a solid back four that you can rely on every week is so important. It's Obviously, we didn't start the season with that, and I think Ashley Young is part of that. Um he does get made scapegoating sometimes. I know people love to go, oh, he's had those. I mean, when you get sent off against Brighton for doing something stupid as he did, you can understand why people have those reservations. But I think in a tricky start of the season with lots of players being injured, injured I think he's been he's been really good for us. So I'm keeping him in at right back. At left back, Michelenko, come back last week, full game, done him really well. Do we need another left back? Yes, 100%, absolutely. Competition. Push him on. But he's definitely our starting left back as it stands. So he starts at left he starts at left back. Centre backs. This is where people have been talking, haven't they, about do you keep Michael Keane in? Do you drop Tarkowski because he's injured? Bring him Brantway back. I think this is an area of the pitch where we have to have our number one partnership. That for me means James Tarkowski and Jared Brantwaite start as our centre backs. They're our number one partnership, and I think in some positions, and there aren't many in our team, you have to 100% have your best players. I think if you were to drop Tarkowski, the aerial um, defensive ability in aerial positions would be weakened because Tarkowski wins so many headers at the back. Michael Keane doesn't win that many headers, or certainly doesn't even go for that many headers, because Tarky does. Brantwaite, yeah, can be a foil for that, but I think this is our best partnership, and I think Brantwaite's such a special talent. Listen, Michael Keane has been doing okay, and he scored a great goal, but don't let your heart rule your head on this. You know, we, as all football fans, romanticise, and when someone has a good game, and someone, or someone scores, and you get here, all the fans singing Kino and all that kind of thing. Often you can go, oh, yeah, would you give him a new cut? You know, all that kind of thing. For me, you play your best players. And if Brantwaite, with another week of training, I can understand why he didn't play last week. I really, I really can. But if he's fit this week, he starts. And then you have to take that emotion out of it. And there is no emotion there for me either. You know, for me, Brantwaite's a better better player and will start the game. So that's my back four. Into midfield. I'm going for a Disagana gay and I'm delighted to Corey. Um in the last few weeks I've favoured Mangala, but I just thought last week the legs of the Corey getting round midfield was a real plus point for me. Um I do think Mangala helps you have a little bit more control. But I, I, I did it was the Corey last week I thought I thought he did well and I thought Disagana gay is excellent in that position anyway. Um, I think the way Fulham play with having the three behind the striker, there's, you know, there's a lot of movement there, and and I think we we're gonna have to keep. It's not it's not just about sitting in; it's about tracking those people. So I'm gonna keep the core in, and I just gonna go uh, ahead of them. 
On the right hand side, Jack Harrison obviously started last week. Lindstrom uh, wasn't wasn't well. Um, Lindstrom on the bench this week, hopefully. So Harrison continue. Obviously put the ball in for what was in Jai's goal last week. I'd like to see him put more early crosses in like that with Dom in there and plays at the back post. Certainly if it's um, coming back from our own set pieces and there's players still in there. So I thought he did all right last week. Uh, on the left-hand side, Njai obviously has been a major plus point for us this season and again, scored last week and you know he's got the song now that everyone's been talking about um, and he entertains at home and that's what people want in home games they want that entertainment so i think he's thriving at the moment and may you know long may continue him being on the left allows dwight mcneil to play in that number 10 role uh he did brilliantly well for michael Keane's goal last week and again picking up the ball in that little pocket that he likes to get in on the right hand side opens it up on his left foot he is dangerous i think people are starting to see that people might start backing off him set pieces are huge as well he's you know he's been contributing so well to us this season um creating goals so he he obviously stays in the team on up front dominic carvant lewin last week as a center forward doing a center forward's job i thought he was excellent I don't know what to say about his finishing. His finishing is, it's we've all said, everyone knows it has to massively improve. Is it going to improve at this stage of his career? Would it help if Everton brought someone in? Um, I do believe that there might be a coach that could come in and coach him that has been made unemployed this week. Could bring in someone like that in as a striking coach because I think when that man was at our club, we were getting he helped get the best out of Dominic Carvalho Lewin. Dom, Dom really helps this team, and it's clear that Beto isn't going to be going to get much of a look in um, under Sean Dyche. Now, we're waiting for Schmitty and we're waiting for Brozier to come back, but they're still ways off, and Schmitty's injury does sound like a bit of a complicated one. Sounds a bit horrible as well. Um, but it's probably going to be after the next international break, which is good because there's going to be lots of games at the back end of November going into December and the start of January. So it's good to have that rotation, but the manager's not looking to rotate at the moment. Certainly as we as we have one game a week. And Dom, as I said, has been, has been good as a focal point, but the finishing has to improve. He has to get more variation in his finishing. Just trying to give the goalie the eyes and going on the inside, just not working. He has to get the dink finish in his... Um, in his armory. I don't know whether that'll ever happen, but if Dom could score in this game, you know, be huge for him. Huge for him. It's a little confidence boost. Been a few games now since he scored. And he's gotta, you know, after scoring two in a row, it's it's been a few games now. So he's gotta get a goal. He's gotta be picking up a goal every three games, really, ideally. Um, and get people off his back. I don't listen, people can criticize him all he wants. I don't see a better option at Everton. Beto is not a better option. He just isn't. Anyone with eyes, I think, can see that. So, that's my 11. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Who would you play? Who would you not play? Let me know. Give this video a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you check out the match preview with Baz and myself. And if you want more great videos, join us over on Toffee TV Premier. The link is in the description and the QR codes come on the screen now. See you later.